Hello everybody, welcome to another class of Science Wednesday. Welcome. In the last classes, we have been talking about the coronavirus and about the COVID-19. COVID-19 is the disease caused by coronavirus. Its most common symptoms are cough, fever, breathing difficulties and a lack of smell. Some people do not have symptoms. COVID-19 can be dangerous if our immune system overreacts. But then, if we get the symptoms, if we, if we start being suspicious of being sick, what, what should we do? I mean, it's not so difficult what you should do. What you should do is self-isolate, so you cannot give it to other people. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And call a doctor. And that's it. And shouldn't we take uh, medicines? Like there is not yet any proven medicine that works against Corona. So they are now developing medicines. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, we have a guest oh. from the Netherlands, and she's going to show us a little bit more about how this development of medicines works. Hi, I'm Luz, and in today's Science Wednesday, I'll tell you something about the development of vaccines and therapy against the coronavirus that Elske and Joram already told you everything about. Vaccines are not the same as therapy. Vaccines make sure that you don't get a disease, they prevent it. While therapy, on the other hand, makes sure that if you have a disease, you get better. It cures it. If a virus enters a human body, it is able to infect the human cells via some sort of handshake. Vaccines are meant to prevent that by training the immune system to recognize the virus before it enters. Immune cells are recruited and they produce antibodies, a sort of natural medicine. Antiviral therapy, on the other hand, is meant to cure disease in people that are already ill. Various types of therapy exist, for example those that kill the virus, those that make the patient stronger, those that modify the virus and make sure it cannot infect the cells anymore, and those kind of therapies that work with either natural or artificial antibodies that block the virus and make sure it cannot infect cells anymore. Elske and Joram already showed you that a virus is just some genetic material in a box. Coronavirus, on the other hand, is a special virus. It has spikes. This is what coronavirus looks like in real life. The red triangles are spike proteins. In the lab, we can make a fake spike protein that looks exactly the same as the real coronavirus spike, but it's not dangerous. As Elske and Joram already explained to you, if we use a vaccine, the body gets ready to fight an infection gets the immune cells to protect us and produce antibodies. So what happens is, we use not the whole virus, but only a spike protein to inject into a person as a vaccine. After receiving the vaccine, the immune system goes to work and recruits immune cells and produces antibodies. These antibodies themselves can also be used as therapy to block the coronavirus from infecting human cells. Both the spike protein that can be used as a vaccine and antibodies are made of protein and we can make these proteins in the lab. In the lab, rather than using a whole person, we can just use their cells to produce antibodies or vaccine proteins. Instead of human cells, we can also use yeast cells or bacteria, which are only a million times as small as humans, to produce proteins in a cheaper and more convenient way. To make such proteins, we take the DNA that codes for either the spike protein or an antibody, cut out some part of it and modify it to make the vaccine or therapy even better. We then put the DNA in our bacteria, yeast or mammalian cells to give them the code so that they know how to make the protein. We then let the cells grow and give them some extra feeding 
and they make our protein by themselves, after which we only have to purify it. This all sounds a bit weird, right? Um, cells, bacteria, yeast, proteins. You might wonder what it looks like in real life. So that's what my colleague Kiara will show you in the lab. DNA and bacteria are put together, but the DNA is so small you can't even see it. The bacteria are moved from an ice bath to a warm water bath for a minute and a half and then straight back to ice. Due to the temperature shock, the outside of the bacteria breaks down a little bit and they take up the DNA that codes for our therapeutic or vaccine. Some sort of soup is added, we call it growth medium, that feeds the cells and helps them recover from the shock. These tiny yellow dots are yeasts that we use to produce therapeutic proteins. Yeasts are grown in medium soup as well, so Chiara takes a little bit of each yeast and puts it in medium. The yeasts are then put in this incubator, nice and warm, 28 degrees, to grow for a few days and produce lots and lots of protein. Twice a day, we give the yeast some special power food, methanol, which helps them remember that they should produce our proteins. And this is what comes out, a tube of antibody. Not a lot to see, right? That's what we thought. So we stain it nice and blue for you. There it is. The blue line, right over there, is our anti-COVID antibody produced from yeast. But why is it taking so long? We need to test the vaccines and the therapies we make. At first, it's very important to know that they're safe to give to a patient. And we test that first in animals and then in people. Then we also need to know whether they actually have an effect with therapy that's easy to test. You just inject the therapy into sick people and see if they get better. For vaccines, it takes a lot more time because you have to inject the vaccine in people that are not yet sick and then wait and wait and wait and wait and see whether the vaccine works and they do not get sick. If it all works, we have to produce the proteins at a very large scale. You see how you've seen how we made it in the lab, in very small tubes. Now, if all works out, we have to scale up, make enough to protect the whole world. We hope to get there later this year or early next year. And in the meantime, stay safe. Well, let's see now what we learned today. What did we learn today? Vaccines prevent people from getting sick. Antiviral therapy and medicines cure infected people. In case of corona, the spike protein from the outside of the virus is used to make a vaccine. When you get infected, your immune system starts making antibodies. Antibodies can also be used as treatment. Both the spike protein for the vaccine and the antibodies are made out of proteins. These proteins can be made in a lab by injecting the DNA that codes for a protein into a mammal cell, a yeast cell or a bacterial cell. These cells will then produce proteins. Alright, so I think this was it for today. Yeah. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.